Hey guys, <clears throat> let's get started on this uh, solar system gizmo. I know Ms. Klein already started it with you. Um, she did, I think, the front and then the back of the first page with you. Um, you won't have any problem getting this done now by the end of class today. At least I don't think you will. Ms. Klein can adjust if necessary. But um, <clears throat> one and two, a lot of this just is a walk down middle school memory lane. You've talked about this. You've Memorize the order of the planets, which, small confession, I always forget. I can never remember that thing of my very energetic mother, and then I get confused. All right, so you know that little thing you use to memorize the order of the planets? That thing has never worked for me. But um, <clears throat> when you go through here, I don't think you probably struggled with anything on the first page. When you get to the second, obviously this is a little tedious, if anything else, running those menus. One of the things that I always do on this one is as soon as you fire it up, so if you have this thing up and running, just click all the check boxes you can. So click show orbital paths, and then click the additional data. Um, also notice the zoom in and zoom out. You have to do that when you get to some of those outer planets, and they even let Pluto hang on here, so that you can see some of those that are way, way, way out, away from the sun. Um, Again, I'm assuming that you already did this part with the mass, the radius. The density, you technically don't even have to calculate it. It's given to you. But hopefully you still remember that density is just mass divided by volume. That was supposed to be an equals. Okay, so you should hopefully remember that. That is equals, not whatever that stupid little line is there. Um, <clears throat> and again, I know that you probably already talked about this. And then how you divided them was sort of up to you as long as you could defend it. It couldn't be just, well, if their first letter in their name is a vowel, I will put them in a group and a consonant, you go in another group. That's not very scientific, but as long as you looked at either their mass, their radius, their density, and grouped them, um, we're good. So if you flip to B, I think this is where most of you are starting today. You guys would have talked about this before, this idea of terrestrial planets. Okay, the word terrestrial means land. So you're looking for things that are rocky. A gas giant. Okay, if you think about gas giants, what hopefully you start to think about here is there must be some huge difference in density. When we talked about in the heat unit, thermodynamics unit, we talked about density a fair amount. We know that things that are less dense, they have less mass in a certain amount of space. So less mass per unit volume. Lily. Good lord, my dog sounds like she's drinking a pond behind me. But anyways, uh, what you want to look at is decide where do you think a defining line would be. So which ones are more terrestrial, so more dense, which ones are more ga gaseous is the word. And uh, you just write that down there. So then it shouldn't be too hard to, to figure this part out. It's almost too obvious. So what do the terrestrial planets have in common? What do the gas giants have in common? Number seven, feel free to skip it. And for this part, I want to talk about this one with you. It says, why do you think the inner planets are small and dense? Well, the, well, the outer ones are the gas giants. So the farther you get away, okay, we want to think about this. If you increase your distance from the sun, so you should be writing this down. In general, we see a decrease in density. There is exceptions out there, but in general, the farther away you get from the sun, the less dense it is. <clears throat> now hopefully, you would be, start to think maybe gravity has something to do with this. Because as we know, the farther out we get, the less gravity is going to pull. Whether this is the best way of thinking about it or not, it's how I like to think about it. Think about rolling a snowball, and hallelujah, it's warm out now and we aren't outside in the snow. But if you're going to pack a snowball, maybe you're going to build a snowman or something like that, at first, that thing's pretty fluffy. But then if you keep rolling it along the ground, like to build the base of a snowman, that stuff inside is getting compressed tighter and tighter and tighter. And those outside layers stay fluffy. But the bigger it is, the more it gets compressed. It's almost like the closer it is to the sun, the more you're pushing on that snowball to compress it. All right, so closer to the sun, it's getting pulled on a lot harder. You're getting more compressions, more yeah, a bigger compression um, within. Okay, so the closer we see more dense, the farther from the sun we see a decreased density, and that's due to a decreased gravitational force. 
on it. All right, so oversimplified, but at least hopefully that gets you thinking about it. All right, to activity B. Click reset, you may have to recheck all those boxes that we talked about, but the biggest thing is we're gonna talk talking about Kepler's laws, and I know we started yesterday, well, maybe it's today, who knows, but Johannes Kepler is the dude who spent a whole lot of time figuring this stuff out. And um, there's three laws, we've already mentioned there's three, but one of these is what rules describe the size and the shape of the orbits. Remember, an orbit is just the path. Okay, so how can we figure this out? And what the first thing you're going to do is select Mercury from that drop-down list. So you should see that Mercury's orbit is highlighted, and you should see something regarding a circle or perhaps not a circle. All right, so what you should see is the orbit is not a perfect circle. So if you click play, watch it tootle along around the sun, you see that its distance is not always the same from the sun. And we've already mentioned that in the notes. That's that's why we that's why we know it's elliptical. If it was a circle and you had well, they're looking like a radius or something, and if the sun is right smack dab in the middle, well, then it's always going to be the same distance. Like the moon going around us. The moon travels around the earth in a circular orbit. And so the moon is always the exact same distance from the earth. So Kepler's first law states the orbit is in the shape of a slightly flattened circle or an ellipse. And then we've already talked about the focal points, and the sun is at one of those focal focal points, so at one focus. For eccentricity, it gives it to you in the data displayed at the left. So as long as you have that check box, box marked down, <coughs> excuse me, as soon as you have that done, you should be able to see the number right up there. And let me go all the way out here. Make sure you zoom in all the way, and then check out the speed of Mercury as it goes around the sun, and be more detailed than it just changes speed. Okay, so think about it this way. It's fastest when, and then finish that statement, and it slows when. Okay, so it's fastest when it is doing what? It slows or it's slower when it is doing what else? All right, that's what you're looking for there. That leads to the second law. And then for number four, it says change the speed to fast, and you gotta zoom way out to find good old Pluto. Okay, so the speed has to be fast. That's that purple, just confirming, it's a purple slider at the top. Kick that all the way to the right, zoom out, and watch Pluto. And you're going to see that this is not why Pluto got kicked out of our solar system, so to speak. Okay, Pluto does actually follow the same rules. So you will see that, yes, it is, because it's faster when close to the sun, and then slows as it moves, slows as it moves away. All right, moving on. Activity C, planetary periods. Uh, when we talked about a period, it was the wave unit. And what we said for the period of a wave was it was the time for one complete wave cycle. Not anything too different here, but now when you think the planet's period, I don't know if they use the simple on this or not, I don't think they do, but the period, you should recognize that, is what uh, the time for one complete orbit. Okay, so the period is the time for one complete orbit. So the question, you know we love these ones, where we're looking for direct, indirect, that sort of thing. Orbital radius and the period. So in other words, you're going to take your own guess here, but if the distance from the sun goes up, if you increase the distance from the sun, what happens to the orbital period? So I'm going to draw a blank. You don't have to draw that blank. You're just going to say it goes up or down. So it blanks the orbital period. So think time. So you're going to say it's, okay, if a planet's farther from the sun, 
If it, you think it takes longer to get around there, you're going to say it goes up. If a planet's farther from the sun, you think it's going to go quicker around the sun, then you're going to then put a, put a downward arrow or say decrease, something like that. Um, number two, you're going to click play and then just check it out. So what do you notice about the speed of the planets and their distance from the sun? Okay, so it could be something like this. If planets are closer to the sun, dot, 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 you finish that statement and say, what is going to happen? Okay, did they, are they faster or slower? So is Mercury faster or slower than Jupiter? Okay, something like that. Just pay attention to that. Notice nothing but trouble with number three, so just forget about it. Okay, number four it says Earth takes 12 months to complete an orbit. So Earth's period is 12 months or one year. All right, so that there is no calculation. That is what Earth's period is. All right, so 12 months. Struggling to spell one today. 12 months. Some of you can get fancy on me and say 364.25 or 365.25 days per year. Okay, we get the idea. Um, Astronomical units, you're going to see a thing called AUs. One AU is one unit. It's like, it's like the Earth's average distance to the sun. We call that one, because remember, it's all about us in life. And so the Earth is one AUs from the sun. Something that's, let's say, one and a half times farther than we are from the sun, they would say it's 1.5 AUs. If something's twice as far as we are, they say it's two AUs. If it's half as far as we are, they say it's a half of an AU. So it's actually a pretty easy way of thinking about it. But just remember, we're one AU from the sun, and then they, everything else is compared to us. And we're going to run out of time of what will let me upload, so I'm going to fly. One of the things you're going to not have to do is this. Number nine, make that go away. Uh, <clears throat> these you're able to get right from the additional data table so you're just going to click through the only thing I worry about is the r cubed part okay, it's the orbital radius so it's whatever number you have caret 3 just remember how to cube a number so it's this mean orbital radius that is r so it's r caret 3 for the period we already talked about the symbol once you get it off that drop down me menu it's period, carrot, two. Those go in those columns. You should be able to see an obvious trend. And then you should be able to see something else that is very, very obvious between these two columns for that last one. All right, and nine and 10 go away. So this stuff isn't too tough. This just sets up the more advanced laws, which are laws two and three that we dig a whole lot deeper into. All right, ask Ms. Klein lots of questions. Quit guessing on the gizmos, some of you. All right, I do look at those. And um, have a good day. See ya.